With most of the marquee NFL free agents already off the market, many are already turning their eyes to the 2019 draft. Whether a glaring need went unaddressed or the needs have simply changed, the draft offers the next big opportunity for teams like the Dallas Cowboys to stock talent for next season. While they've been conservative so far this offseason, Dallas has been active in the last few days in covering bases and giving itself more flexibility for the draft. They don't want to have to reach on a talent because of a need, nor do they want to tip their hand too much to the rest of the league. As of now there are still some significant acquisitions that could happen. Dallas has visited with veteran safety Eric Berry and defensive lineman Malik McDowell, plus are reportedly in trade talks with Miami for defend and Robert Quinn. Any of these moves could have a big impact on their need levels for the draft. We've already seen some changes thanks to off-season activity. With Tuesday's signing of Randall Cobb, plus moves to retain Tavon Austin and Alan Hearns, Dallas may not be looking at a receiver as early as we might have thought. The same can be said for Jason Witten's return in the tight end position. If the draft were today, without accounting for any of the players that the Cowboys have had talks with but remain unsigned, here's how I would rank the team's 2019 draft needs, safety defensive end defensive tackle tight end running back wide receiver offensive tackle cornerback linebacker kicker center guard quarterback Mike White as their drafted backup project for at least another year, punter could add someone to compete with Chris Jones and save some cap dollars, fullback they resigned Jamai Zolawale, who they barely use anyway. Zero need here, I put safety on top because it's the spot that could most use an immediate upgrade and has some pressing future need. Dallas didn't make the big move for Earl Thomas that many hoped for and Jeff Heath's contract expires after this season. Hopefully, a second-round talent could compete for a starting job now and at least replace Heath in 2020. Even with the Kerry Hyder signing defensive end has some major red flags. Demarcus Lawrence has sworn he would hold out without a long-term deal. Randy Gregory is suspended again, and now Tyrone Crawford is now facing potential league action from an incident with police last week. Unless the Cowboys think Taco Charlton is going to make a big push in his third year, they could be hurting for a pass rush in 2019. I expect things with Lawrence will get resolved, and I doubt Crawford will get suspended for more than a game or two if at all. But Dallas could still use another solid if they don't get this deal for Robert Quinn Dunn. Remember, the 2019 Cowboys aren't working with a first-round pick. Barring a trade, they'll be waiting until the 58th pick to make their first selection. That limits the impact potential of their picks and makes what they do with the day two picks all the more critical. Safety Eric Berry, currently a free agent. Russian Oi USA Today Sports, so what, if the Cowboys pull off these three potential moves, adding Berry, McDowell, and Quinn? Each player would help to address the top three needs on my list. Eric Berry hopefully solves the immediate upgrade need at safety, though it may not do much for the future. He turns 31 this year and was released by Kansas City because of multiple injury issues. Dallas could still consider taking a rookie prospect, perhaps even releasing Jeff Heath for cap savings if needed. Malik McDowell was considered a first-round talent in 2017 but has never played after a major ATV accident prior to his first training camp with Seattle. If he's finally recovered enough to return to football and play at his original potential, he could give Dallas a talent infusion that none of their draft capital could provide. Robert Quinn has been around a while but will be just 29 in May, and is still putting up sacks at a solid rate. He's averaged 7.5 sacks the last two years with two different teams. He would go a long way to stabilizing things at defensive end and allowing Dallas look at guys like Gregory and Hyder as icing on the cake. If Dallas lands all three players then I would adjust the list as follows, tight end safety defensive tackle running back defensive end wide receiver etc. If you think about it, the safety and tight end positions would be kind of similar in this scenario.
You'd have Eric Berry and Jason Witten as the veteran stop gaps, Xavier Woods and Blake Jarwin as intriguing young guys with starting potential, and Kevin Frazier and Dalton Schultz as other young depth. However, at every step, safety would be deeper and have more upside. Barry should have more to offer than Witten, Woods is more proven than Jarwin, and Frazier is more experienced than Schultz. Plus, we didn't even mention that you'd have Jeff Heath for experience and versatility at safety. Meanwhile, Tay Rico Gathers probably won't be on next year's team. So yes, I'd vault tight end to the top of the need list. Dallas may like Blake Jarwin but they could find a far more polished and talented player with the 58th pick. Defensive lineman Christian Covington, Maria Lysaker, Cal Sport Media, even with McDowell and Christian Covington added to the mix, Dallas would still be wise to address the defensive tackle position. They have several contract issues coming up at once in 2020. Covington and Maliak Collins will be unrestricted free agents next year. The Cowboys will also likely want to finally shed Tyrone Crawford's contract, with $8 million in cap relief possible. That would leave them pretty bare at defensive tackle. Dallas could make a move now to solidify their rotation and prepare for the future. They'd have a little more stability at defensive end with assumed multi-year deals for Lawrence and Quinn, making tackle the more immediate concern. The backup running back spot can't be ignored, with only Darius Jackson and Jordan Chun currently signed behind Ezekiel Elliott. If Dallas doesn't bring back Rod Smith between now and the draft, they may want to spend a high pick for Zeke's relief man and an additional offensive weapon. Elliott's own contract will be up for discussion as soon. Having a talented player with a four-year rookie deal behind him could give the Cowboys much-needed leverage in any future talks with their franchise back. Tilda 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 We'll see if Dallas lands any of the players we've hypothesized about. Any of them would help lessen the need at their positions, but those would still remain important areas for the Cowboys to look at in the upcoming draft. 2019 NFL Draft 2019 offseason In a span of a week, the Dallas Cowboys have solidified their wide receiver group with the resigning of Tavon Austin to a one-year deal and the signing of former Green Bay Packers wide receiver Randall Cobb. Despite the loss of Cole Beasley, the Cowboys have a created a really good group of receivers for quarterback Dak Prescott to throw to. Cobb joins a really nice group of players that includes incumbent starters on the outside in Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup as well as solid depth players in Austin, Alan Hearns, and Noah Brown. Throw in Cedric Wilson, the Dallas Cowboys' sixth-round pick from the 2018 NFL Draft and the Cowboys may have one of the deeper receiving core in the NFL. The question is, how will the Dallas Cowboys coaching staff delineate the roles? Let's take a look. Outside receivers as I mentioned before, the Dallas Cowboys are returning their top two options on the outside in Amari Cooper, who is the ex-wide receiver and Michael Gallup, the Z receiver. Both players will go into week one as the starters at their respective positions in two wide receiver formations. Despite some of the overthrows from Dak Prescott to Michael Gallup, Gallup had a really nice rookie season and got better as the year went along, even leading the Cowboys in receiving in the playoff loss to the Los Angeles Rams. In that game, Gallup recorded the first 100-yard game of his career. Sure, it was in an attempt to come back by the Dallas Cowboys but it is impressive nonetheless. His touchdown catch against the Seattle Seahawks the week before was clutch. The Cowboys needed that to take the lead at the end of the first half. 2018 was only the beginning for Michael Gallup. He showed an ability to win with a full offseason to work with Dak Prescott, their chemistry and connection should only improve. As for Cooper, his presence was felt right away as the offense just looked different once he stepped on the field. It's no coincidence that Dak Prescott's two best career games in terms of passing yardage came with Cooper in 2018. He's such a threat that he opens up space for the rest of the wide receiver group. His route running, speed, ability to run after the catch make him a threat to score anytime he's targeted. 
behind Cooper and Gallup, you have options in the event that one of them gets hurt. Alan Hearns, Tavon Austin, and Noah Brown are all players who took snaps on the outside for the Dallas Cowboys in 2018 and did so with effectiveness. Hearns' best game of the year came just before the Cooper deal was made as he went for five receptions for 75 yards. Tavon provided downfield speed on several occasions and provides some gadget quality that the Dallas Cowboys love to have. Noah Brown is a player that the Dallas Cowboys love to deploy as a blocker in the running game. While it looked like he might get more run in the passing game in 2019, the depth additions will limit him again to a specialty role. If needed, though, he could be an option to take snaps on the outside as his big frame allows him to box out defensive backs down the field. There will be snaps on the outside for someone when the Cowboys go to 11 personnel, because of Amari Cooper's ability to slide into the slot. Slot receiver Obviously, the writing is on the wall with who the Dallas Cowboys are planning on deploying in the slot as things stand right now, and that's Randall Cobb. While Cobb should be penciled in as the starter in the slot, I doubt that he's going to get 100% of the snaps there in 11 or 10 personnel groupings. Mari Cooper, Alan Hearns, Tavon Austin, Noah Brown, and Cedric Wilson could all push for playing time from the slot. Last month, I wrote a piece about Alan Hearns and his effectiveness in the slot and why the Cowboys should feature him there. With Cobb coming off an injury-laden season, the Cowboys would be wise to give some snaps to Hearns along with Tavon Austin. In Jacksonville, Hearns was incredibly effective from the slot running posts, slants, and ins and outs. His size and route running made him an effective mismatch against linebackers, safeties, and cornerbacks alike. Remember, it wasn't long ago that Hearns had a 1,000-yard season with Blake Bortles at the helm. Tavon Austin's quickness is an asset that could be very effective in the slot as well. Though he lacks size, he's a player that opposing defenses have to account for because of his ability to make big plays once the ball's in his hands. The Cowboys haven't been shy about carrying seven wide receivers on their 53-man rosters and it's possible, though unlikely that they could do it again in 2018. As things stand now, I see Noah Brown and Cedric Wilson as the potential odd men out. Of course, this could all get reshuffled if the Dallas Cowboys use a top 100 pick on a wide receiver in the draft. With Amari Cooper, Alan Hearns, Tavon Austin, and Randall Cobb only under contract through the 2019 season, the Dallas Cowboys would be wise to invest at the position despite the strength of the position in 2019. As the Dallas Cowboys continue the process of building a roster capable of taking them back to the playoffs, and hopefully to a Super Bowl, this next season, they're bringing in another safety to try and strengthen their top 10 defense. This time it's free agent safety George Aloka, formerly of the Minnesota Vikings. Per NFL Network's Ian Rapoport, the Dallas Cowboys are set to meet with the They're still looking to add in the secondary. It will be the third meeting this week that they've had with a veteran safety after hosting recently resigned Indianapolis's Colts safety Clayton Gathers and former Kansas City Chiefs safety Eric Berry. The Cowboys feel really good about Xavier Woods at safety, but definitely could use some depth at the position as they head toward the 2019 NFL Draft. Aloka is coming off a season where he was relegated to a reserve role for the Vikings. In five of the last six seasons, Aloka's played all 16 games, and the one season he didn't, he played 12. He has nine career interceptions and has three seasons with more than 70 total tackles. Back in August of last year, Brian Martin argued that the Dallas Cowboys should pursue Aloka after being released by the Cincinnati Bengals. He would play the strong or box safety role in the Cowboys' defense if they were to come to an agreement. Stay tuned for more free agency coverage from us here at InsideTheStar.com. It's a debate that has raged on social media for some time now and it likely won't slow down as the offseason progresses and the Dallas Cowboys begin to hand out massive contracts to their top players. Pay Ezekiel Elliott. 
Hey Byron Jones, if you could only pay one, which would you pay? This week fellow Inside the Star staff writer, Kevin Brady took to Twitter to poll the populace and his results were a bit surprising to me. If you can only pay one it should be the results inspired me to see what would happen if I put the same poll on my timeline. Inspired by my teammate at Kevin Brady 88 if you can only pay one, which would it be? On Monday, Kevin wrote a piece looking at one of the difficult decisions facing the Dallas Cowboys this offseason or next. If the Cowboys could only extend Byron Jones or Ezekiel Elliott, who should they choose? Kevin, as am I, is a firm believer in Byron Jones' ability and says the Cowboys should extend them, and I agree. But let's look at the other side of the argument. To begin, the Cowboys should and probably will get both a guy's contract extensions either this offseason or next. It's not impossible with the cap continuing to increase at a rate of about $8 minus $12 million per year that the Cowboys will have the space to get the deals done that they need to get done. Ezekiel Elliott and Byron Jones included. Byron Jones settled in nicely at cornerback during his first full season at cornerback and knowing what we know about Jones, he won't be satisfied with a second-team All-Pro appearance. Expect him to get better. However, if there's a single player that represents the current identity of the Dallas Cowboys, it's running back Ezekiel Elliott. The Cowboys made him the fourth overall pick in 2016 and haven't looked back in their plan to establish the running game. For his career Elliott has averaged 26.9 touches per game over the course of his 40 games. Here's a look at what Elliott's per game and per 16 game paces look like through the first three seasons of his career. As you can see from the table above, Ezekiel Elliott is averaging 131.2 total yards per game for his career. In his rookie season he had 1,994 total yards and he sat out the Week 17 game against the Philadelphia Eagles when the Cowboys had the NFC and home field advantage locked up. In 2017, Elliott sat out six games and still had nearly 1,000 yards rushing. In 2018, Elliott broke through the 2,000 total yard barrier after seeing a huge increase in his targets and receptions. Ezekiel Elliott has been everything the Dallas Cowboys could have hoped for and more. With a leadership role he's taken with the team, he's a player that leads both vocally and by example. There are few players on the Dallas Cowboys that give as much effort as he does each snap. How many times has it looked like Elliott was about to get dropped for a 2 or 3 yard loss only to grind through tackles to pick up a 4 yard gain? How many times has he bounced off tacklers to get to the first down marker? Ezekiel Elliott is the human personification of dirty yards, but don't let that fool you into thinking that Elliott can't take it to the house every time he touches the ball. Elliott's is a game-breaker who threatens the defense every time he steps on the field. In 2018, Elliott led the NFL in yards after contact, per pro football focus. His 949 yards after contact in 2018 would have ranked 13th in the NFL in rushing, which was better than David Johnson's 940 yards rushing last season. Not many running backs affect a football game like Ezekiel Elliott does. Few players outside of the quarterback position are as much of a focal point for their offense while being an attention grabber for opposing defenses like Ezekiel Elliott is. In 2018, he saw eight or more men in the box on nearly 25% of his carries in 2018. Some of that is related to the Dallas Cowboys' insistence on using two tight ends on 50% of their running plays per sharp football, but the other aspect is related to how much they respect the Dallas Cowboys' running game. Since the 2014, the Cowboys have been synonymous with running the football. DeMarco Murray, Darren McFadden, and now Ezekiel Elliott have been the faces of that running game behind the Cowboys' elite offensive line. Even in a down year for offensive line play from the Dallas Cowboys, Elliott still managed to lead the NFL in rushing for the second time in three seasons. Elliott made the Pro Bowl for the second time in three years as well. 
Were it not for the railroad job done by NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell in 2017, there's a really good chance that Elliott leads the league in rushing three years in a row and that the Dallas Cowboys make the playoffs all three seasons. Sure, the running back position is undervalued in the NFL and rushing yardage can be replaced, but there are intangibles to Elliott's game that are very difficult to replace. His ability to grind out the dirty yards, break big plays, create yards after contact, pass protect be a threat as a receiver, and his leadership make him a player that is difficult to replace. Yes, Byron Jones was really good in 2018 and deserves to get paid by the Dallas Cowboys as well, but you'd be hard-pressed to find a player on the Cowboys roster who has been as consistent in dominating week in and week out as Ezekiel Elliott has been over the last three years.